Reports from different sources are citing a decline in smartphone sales. Apple took over Samsung as the number one smartphone maker, and it looks like smartphones have finally reached an innovation ceiling. It's a big claim right there. However, despite all of this, Xiaomi seems to be growing rapidly, and it is considered the Apple of China. They draw a lot of inspiration from Apple, maybe even a bit more. However, let's save that for later on. You've heard the name, seen the devices, and like any other brand that you're not familiar with, you are clearly wondering, who is Xiaomi? Is it another subsidiary of Huawei, a Chinese startup tech venture, or a rebranded OnePlus? Sup everyone, SK here. In today's episode, we look at how, in only under 10 years, Xiaomi grew from making custom ROMs for Android phones in China to actually being the third largest smartphone brand in the world. But hold on, what are ROMs? We first need to look at the stock version of Android, which looks like this in a basic form. Different manufacturers use Android as an operating system, but they need to differentiate their devices from other Android phones, so they add custom ROMs, and these makes phones look different, add features such as the split screen found on the Samsung devices, Huawei's camera modifications, S Pen support, and more. They change the look and feel of the phone. Cool, now that we have an idea of what a ROM is, let's get that out of the way and let's get to know Xiaomi a bit more. The company was started in 2010, the same year South Africa hosted the 2010 FIFA World Cup and it was founded by Li Jin, a former CEO of Kingsoft, an alternative software for Microsoft Office used in China. If you still have problems pronouncing the name, according to the then VP Hugo Barra, think of the two words show me, then pronounce the first word as if it was shower. I hope you got that. You get used to it the more you say it. However, I hope you are happy with my pronunciation. The name itself means little rice, and Legion said the name is about revolution and being able to bring innovation into a new era. Also, Interesting enough is the MI at the end of the word Xiaomi, which stands for mobile internet, and sometimes mission impossible. It is worth noting that Xiaomi does not only produce smartphones, they also have a wide variety of Internet of Things products. To expand beyond the Chinese borders, in 2013, Xiaomi hired a former Google engineer, Hugo Barra to oversee the global expansion and by 2015 the company had expanded to Mexico, Brazil, Philippines, India, Thailand, Vietnam and more, selling more than 70 million smartphones. One interesting factor is how Xiaomi became the biggest smartphone brand in India before Samsung took over their market share in January 2021. The company entered the Indian market with the Mi 3, only selling it online using flash sales. If you don't understand what that is, it basically means when a company sells a product at a discount for a short period of time and the device sold out. They followed up with the Mi 4, which sold for about half price of the Samsung Galaxy S5. However, it offered similar specs to the phone. You also need to understand that the Indian market is very tech oriented. The company came at a time when Chinese brands were not offering satisfactory high quality products. Xiaomi came with a bang for your buck but didn't compromise on the quality. The company targeted average consumer market where other companies were following Apple's premium pricing system. Xiaomi started offering budget-friendly phones to attract low-income consumers and the strategy just worked smoothly. Currently, the company offers over 10 categories of products ranging from laptops, TVs, power banks, smart speakers, to name a few. Though things might not be looking good for the company, it faces competition from Lenovo, Oppo, Vivo and Samsung. By the way, Samsung's ability to manufacture its own chips display panels, camera sensors puts it at a competitive advantage over other companies. It supplies other companies with the very same materials for production of phones. Firstly, you have to understand that Xiaomi's business strategy is to sell phones for market penetration and only makes about anything from 2% to 9 
percent profit from selling phones so they claim but other sources claim it's more than 40 percent anyway back to affordability the company believes that selling a lot of phones gets people into the internet services business which contributes a lot of its revenue xiaomi spends less on advertising there are other sources claiming that the company does not advertise on product but it's not entirely true Products are sold using flash sales, with products selling out in just 6 minutes, and it uses social media to create a hype for its devices, even to a point of employing their fans to be employees of the company. The products have a longer product cycle, between 24 to 36 months. How does the product cycle of a smartphone look like? See, phones are released every 12 month cycle. Brands source out the best hardware to compete. For example, Apple uses the best camera sensor from Sony, high quality display panels from Samsung or LG, and TSMC for chips. To keep costs low, Xiaomi buys materials in bulk and will further source display panels from Samsung or TCL even post the 12 month cycle period because these materials lose their market value over time as new tech is introduced, hence lowering the cost of the final product post the 12 month cycle. Xiaomi uses its products to push for advertisements on its devices. This can be frustrating for some users. However, there are some guidelines you can find online to help with disabling ads. But if you look at the bright side, unlike most companies, Consumers are directly benefiting from this business practice by Xiaomi for those affordable devices. The company sells phones directly to consumers, cutting the middleman, hence products are sold online. This allows Xiaomi to sell phones everywhere around the world except of course, the US. In some parts of Africa, Xiaomi is seen as a sister company of Huawei, and if anyone does not trust the brand, it is often coined as the cheaper Huawei or Huawei but with Google services, or just anything that the customer can resonate with. As much as both companies originate from China, they operate differently, and you can tell with the research and development that goes into Huawei's products, their technology is ahead of time. Now that we have that out of the way, how did Xiaomi grab the market apart from making affordable smartphones? In 2015, Xiaomi partnered with Foxconn, the company that manufactures iPhones, to produce phones locally in India. It currently employs more than 30,000 people, of which 95% of them being women. The same strategy is used by Samsung, Infinix, Apple, OnePlus, Nokia, Motorola, Huawei, asus and more as part of the prime minister's made in india campaign but hold on isn't selling phones online a viable strategy well not if you're trying to avoid import tariffs the same strategy does not work very well with apple which is struggling with the market share in india but apple does not seem to be bothered with that for now I got some ideas for you. Okay. okay. I spoke to some people at Walmart yesterday. Yeah. An arrangement with Walmart Flipkart to take over India with a budget phone rather than doing a piecemeal. For us, we're about making the best product that enriches people's lives. And so we're not about making the cheapest. For us, what we've seen is there's enough people in every country in the world that we play in that we can have a really good business by selling the best phone. Although some budget-friendly devices are manufactured in India, such as the iPhone SE, the lack of customization on Apple devices is not appealing to the Indian market. The lack of support on Apple Maps for local landmarks even made it worse compared to what consumers are receiving on Google. In 2020, the worst year ever, Xiaomi invested $20 million in a Chinese display maker, Ziyun. Apologies for that pronunciation. Perhaps this will further reduce the cost of materials used in their phones, and we could probably see a high spec definition display on a Xiaomi budget phone. December on the same year, 
they released their Mi 11 as the first phone to come equipped with their Qualcomm Snapdragon 888. What makes this a big deal is that Samsung is well known to be the brand that first launches with the latest chips from Qualcomm and in 2020 they lost the crown to Xiaomi. On a brighter side for Samsung, the company is able to put their attention on Exynos chips that Samsung produces in-house for their mobile phones. Like any thriving company disturbing the market, it's not all perfect for this Chinese company. As per the report by Forbes, Xiaomi has been caught sending user data to another tech giant called Alibaba. The data is recorded even when the phone is in cognito mode or known as private internet browsing. Xiaomi denied these allegations and later on announced that its next internet browser update will allow users to stop sending data to its Chinese servers. In 2014, India banned Xiaomi from selling phones after Ericsson filed a lawsuit against the company for patent infringement. Mobile phones use GSM, GPRS, Edge, WC, DMA, also known as 3G, which is a patent of Ericsson. It required Xiaomi to pay a license fee to use this technology. Later on, Xiaomi would send back over 100,000 phones back to China and would continue to sell phones with Qualcomm chips, which has a license from Ericsson. In 2020, Philips would take the same move, claiming Xiaomi violated its patents related to the use of 4G or LTE, however you know it. Much like Huawei, Xiaomi has been declared, and I quote, communist Chinese military company by the US government and burned US citizens from investing in the company. Xiaomi denied any claims of being affiliated with the Chinese military and filed a lawsuit in return. The case is not the same with Huawei. Xiaomi has not been added to the entity list, which restricts any trade with the US technology. Also adding to that, Xiaomi is a bit skeptical about the US markets, as the patent enforcement procedures are very strict in the country. There are different internet sources citing that Xiaomi might have violated Apple's patents, but Apple has not filed for patents and infringement. Xiaomi draws so much inspiration from Apple that their stores look very similar to Apple stores and the same can be said with some of their product line. India is Xiaomi's biggest overseas success. Only launching in 2014, they became a top brand in the country in just four years. So far, their mobile division consists of Redmi, Mi and Poco, also known as the flagship killer. Xiaomi has launched over 1,000 meetup events with the fans to get to know their views and form close relationships with their fans. It is now the largest Internet of Things manufacturer in the world, taking over Samsung according to Xiang Wang, the global senior vice president. And the company invests in over 270 startup companies and if the products are successful, they are sold through their stores. One very fun and concerning fact is that they can trace how many of their products are used worldwide in real time. But I guess this is what most companies do, but they are not upfront about it. In early 2021, Xiaomi opened over 1,000 stores in a single day, speeding up the deployment of offline channels for selling products. Just another method to get products more faster into the hands of consumers. Xiaomi signed a patent agreement with Nokia to share the technology. One of the benefits we will see from this is the improved camera quality because for years this hasn't been their strongest point. After the launch of the Xiaomi Redmi K40 in March 2021, the phone sold over 300,000 units in just 5 minutes. And this just shows you how much committed fans are. They even send the company poems of appreciation.
You turn us on with your very best smartphone. Now looking back, I know you make it big. Remember the lawsuit against the U.S. According to Bloomberg, on the 13th of March 2021. Xiaomi won the case against the US government and that put a temporary pause on the US ban. This brings me to the end of the episode. The future looks bright for the company. It has entered into a space that other companies have considered to be less profitable and their commitment to bring affordable phones to a different market is unmatched. I'm Sibulolo Kanyele and that's it from me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button for more content. See you in the next one. Cheers.